Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at subpatches and abstractions. Subpatches and abstractions can be really useful because um, in visual programming, whilst it's very clear um, how things are put together, um, because of the lines that are drawn between the objects, that makes the signal flow really clear. One of the downsides is that um, quite quickly um, they can potentially become uh, very complicated. So being able to group things into sub patches and bring things up as abstractions uh, can assist with that. So let's look at a quite simple um, example that we can use. So I'm creating um, a oscillator, which will just produce a sine wave at a certain frequency. Um, and then I've got a little amplifier for that, and it's going out to a digital to analog converter. And so if we bring the pitch up to something we can hear, turn up the amplitude, so we can hear um, that sound. Excellent. So to demonstrate um, how we can encapsulate this um, into a subpatch, if I create a new um, object, subpatches um, in PD always start with the PD um, prefix, and you put a space and then the name of the subpatch. In this case, I'm going to call the subpatch tone. That opens up um, a new window, as you can see. I'm going to copy. Um, the relevant, uh, actually I'll keep the other one, copy the relevant um, parts of the patch that I want to encapsulate in that sub patch and paste it in the sub patch. In order to communicate with the sub patch, we need to make sure that we have an inlet and that will let, uh, this inlet will let data in. Um, we have one for our frequency and we'll add a second inlet for our amplitude. Then we need to have an outlet and the outlet is an audio signal um, and so we will use outlet um, tilde to indicate that it's an audio stream that's coming out. Inlet tilde also works if you've got audio coming in. So then if you have a look at the tone uh, sub patch, you'll see that there are the two inlets have shown up and the one outlet has shown up. So now we don't need that any further because it's all encapsulated inside our sub patch. So we can go out from our audio out, out to our deck um, and we can reconstitute our pitch and our amplitude. Um, I'm going to change the amplitude so that we stay within range. So if we turn that up, you'll see that as we change the values here, they change also inside the sub patch. Um, that works. And again, the sub patch is going. So it operates just the same, but as you can possibly see, um, the visual appearance is much more straightforward. So particularly good for um, performance environments where you don't need to worry about the details of what's going on. Okay. One other thing um, I want to demonstrate today too is how we can send information um, around our patch and inside our sub patches. We're going to use um, um, a send object to do that. Um, so let's say we send the frequency. So um, the send object will send values with this name. Um, and they can be received um, somewhere. For example, if I just set up a test here, I can receive the frequency uh, values. You'll see that the send has an input. So if I put um, a number box into that and take a number box out of the receive, that the numbers that are passed in to send go out to receive. Uh, let me show you a diagram about all of the sort of send and receive options there are in PD. So we've got what we just used here, send and receive with their names. Um, and send can go to any number of receives and 
um, I receive can get stuff from any number of sends and they just deal with data. The audio ones have some different restrictions. So the send tilde audio and the receive tilde, um, they this, have this architecture where there's one send that can go to many um, outlets. So you can receive the signal in many places, but only send one. If you want to do the inverse of that, then PD provides a different set of um, equivalent objects, throw and catch. Um, and they work in the inverse for audio. You can uh, throw several audio streams and capture them as a mixed signal in one catch audio. Okay, let's get back to our patch. So we have our send and our receive. Um, as well as being able to do it within the one patch, we can also paste um, this receive into our sub patch. So here I am inside this, the tone sub patch. And when we send, oops, that was very silly, Andrew. Sorry about that. That's why I always try and change those amplitude things. Oh, I see what the problem. Okay, also I was a bit silly in that I said, it was called frequency, but I sent it to the um, amplitude. So let's do something a bit more sensible. Okay, and then we can use integers. Okay, that's fine. Turn up the volume. Excellent. So we now can control the stuff in our patch, perhaps um, slightly superfluously, um, using the send. Uh, and we've also got a direct connection. And the sub patch will just take whatever the most recent value was that was passed to it. Um, and we can do the same, of course, for amplitude. So let's do that now. We can send um, a message called amp and send a value to that and this time before I make that mistake again. Limit it from zero to one. Go into my sub patch and receive the amp values and pass them to the amplitude. So we've got some direct ways of passing data to our sub patch and otherwise. Now, subpatches like this tone subpatch, when we save our main patch, um, the all of the subpatches will be saved with it. And when we reopen um, our main patch, all of our subpatches will be reloaded and um, they'll exist. We can, of course, close them. We can come and click on them to reopen the subpatches and edit them. Um, one thing that you might want to do, however, is to reuse a, a sub patch across many projects. You might create some very useful function that, that can be used in several places. Um, to do that, it's possible to save things so that they can be <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, used in other patches without having to be saved with those patches. And when we save, in a sense, a sub patch with its inlets and outlets, um, we refer to that as an abstraction. What I'm going to do is to create a new patch and just paste everything in. So this is currently um, untitled, but otherwise it's exactly identical to our tone patch. And I'm going to save that as tone abs, just for short for abstraction. So that um, tone abs patch is then um, saved separately from this main patch. Um, for abstractions to be used inside a patch, they need to be saved in the same folder, uh, the same directory as the main patch. Then I can open up a thing, open up an object, empty one, and type tone abs. All right. So our tone abs, you can see the difference here is that the sub patch PD tone, that's the one that's saved with this patch, um, still needs the PD one, but the tone abs one, the abstraction version, um, comes up just like um, any of our other um, objects like the DAC or Send or anything else. So it looks like a sort of almost like a native app. So what I'll do is um, delete that. 
So I've deleted my sub patch, but we're going to use the abstraction instead. We've got these um, values here to send data to, and there's our sine wave back. So we're now using um, this as an abstraction. One of the advantages of abstractions is that we can use them a couple of times. So if I create a second one, I can pass some different arguments to it. And then send that also to the DAC. So we've got a second set of arguments here. Um, we can open up either of those. And so the good thing um, about tone instructions is if we edit that, let's just make that go to zero. Um, if we edit the um, abstraction, then both of these instances of the abstraction um, will change uh, to be the same. Okay, one other thing that we can do um, with our abstractions and our sub patches is that we, when we're using the receive, send and receive objects, then we can also send data to them using a message, an internal message. So if we start an internal mes uh, message box with a, col a semicolon, then it becomes an internal message, and we can say, um, send the frequency argument the value of 500. Then when we click on this message, you'll see that over here inside our abstraction, uh, our frequency changed to 500. Let's just um, turn that up a little bit so we can hear it. So we can change um, our frequency to something like 300, like so. Um, we can then go on and also send um, an argument to say the amplitude um, for it to be 0.2. And as we do that, both the frequency and the amplitude change. This in a sense allows us to save presets. So I could have a second one, which is um, 1000 Hertz 0.1 amplitude and then change back by clicking on the other message box. And this allows us to save presets with all of our parameters um, sending messages. What we'll need to do is make sure that um, our patch has got receives with these names so that uh, they can receive those messages. And as before, the receives will always just um, take the most recent message and overwrite whatever was there before. Okay, so there we have sub patches, um, abstractions, um, and presets. Hopefully this will help make your patches a little bit neater and a little bit more usable. I'll see you in the next video.